Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student. I'd like to welcome you to Lesson 94 from the Distinction Bound Student Economics Grade 12 Test Book, written by Cardin Madzokir. This lesson takes us to the 11th topic of our Grade 12 syllabus. Once we are done with this topic, we will have three more topics to finish the syllabus. In Unit 1 Lesson 94 we will look at the performance of an economy from which we will look at the use of indicators. In Unit 2 Lesson 95 we will look at economic indicators. In Unit 3 Lesson 96 we will look at social indicators from which you would then be able to distinguish them from social indicators. In Unit 4 Lesson 97, we will look at international comparisons and lastly we will write a test on economic and social performance indicators. Stay tuned. Now let's dive straight into the lesson for today. Please note, since the previous lesson was a test on industrial development policies, we had no homework. Unit 1, The Performance of an Economy Economic performance is how well a country achieves its macroeconomic objectives. South Africa's macroeconomic objectives are economic growth, full employment, exchange rate stability, price stability, and lastly economic equity. How well our country achieves the above is what we call economic performance. We use economic indicators to establish how the economy is doing. An economic indicator is a statistic or data which shows the behavior of one or other economic variable, usually over time, for example, GDP. I usually say economic performance is like the health of a person. Doctors use health indicators to determine the health of a patient. When a person goes to see a doctor, the doctor will need to see certain health indicators. That is why before you see a doctor, you have to see a nurse who will check your temperature, blood pressure, and weight. A body temperature of 44 degrees Celsius is an indicator that you are sick. When you get in to see the doctor, he will then ask you some questions and based on your responses, he might then check other things like your sugar level, blood, urine etc. When he puts all those numbers together, some figures might then indicate that you are diabetic for example. So as much as a doctor would use certain figures to determine the health of a patient, economists use economic indicators to assess the health of an economy. Certain figures need to be high and certain figures need to be low. For example, the growth rate of a country needs to be high and inflation needs to be low. A 1% growth rate is bad and a 1% inflation rate is good. Let's have a look at these indicators and see if we need to admit or discharge this patient called South Africa. Pay attention to the indicators that are moving there in the middle. The font is kind of small and it might be difficult for some of you to see. This is the site where you can find all economic and social indicators for South Africa. If you want to know in depth about a specific indicator, for example, unemployment rate, just click there where it says publications and then you will see a lot of full publications that you can download in PDF format which can then help you understand the health of our South African economy. Do you think our economy is healthy or sick? What tells you that? Are we in ICU or not? Let us know in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to our channel if you believe our content is helpful. Also turn on the notification bell for you to get notified every time As much we as we need doctors in our lives, our economy needs doctors and hospitals too. The SARB is like a hospital and the governor is like a doctor. When our economy is suffering from high inflation rate, it will be admitted at the SARB. The doctor, Lasetjik Ganyago would then put our economy on a drip, which is called repo rate. I think my example is kind of weird, but it can help you understand how useful these economic indicators can be. When our economy is suffering from low GDP growth rate, it might then be admitted at the National Treasury Hospital and the doctor in this case would be the Minister of Finance. I can go on and on but I think you understand. Keep my example in mind throughout this topic. Also note, that was just an example. There is nothing called National Treasury Hospital. Let's now move on to the use of indicators. Already we know that economists need indicators. Let's see if these indicators can also be useful to others in a country. Economic indicators, as already stated, provide measurements for evaluating the health of our economy, the latest business cycles and how consumers are spending. Various economic indicators are released daily, weekly, monthly and quarterly by Statistics South Africa, South African Reserve Bank and other institutions. Economic indicators were first published for government leaders who needed a better understanding of the economic condition. Today, those indicators are useful across a wide variety of professions. Here is how economic indicators can be useful. The government uses them for budgetary and planning purposes. Economic indicators are used in strategic policy planning and development, 
they are also used to assess current economic conditions. The South African Reserve Bank, SARB, uses these indicators to assess current economic and financial conditions and help adjust monetary policy, which includes raising and lowering interest rates. I think I mentioned this already in my example. Investors use economic indicators to fine-tune their investment strategies. Business leaders make better staffing level, hiring decisions, match inventories to the business cycle, improve business forecasts, and evaluate new business opportunities based on current economic conditions. Purchasing managers improve raw material process forecasts and adjust negotiating strategies to lock in longer-term pricing agreements during periods of economic slowdown when material prices tend to be lowest. Policy analysts use these information-laden reports to guide their economically sensitive policy decisions. Business and economic students develop a thorough understanding of economic indicators to improve their general business knowledge and make them valuable to future employers. Economists use indicators to predict cyclical economic recessions and recoveries and expected changes in stock prices. There are also three terms that describe an economic indicator's direction relative to the direction of the general economy and they are as follows. Procyclical indicators. These indicators move in the same direction as the general economy, they increase when the economy is doing well, decrease when the economy is doing badly. GDP is an example of a procyclical indicator. Next up is countercyclical indicators. These indicators move in the opposite direction to the general economy. The unemployment rate is countercyclical because it rises when the economy is deteriorating. Lastly, we have acyclical indicators. These indicators have little or no correlation to the business cycle. They may rise or fall when the general economy is doing well, and may rise or fall when it is not doing well. This takes us to our homework activity 83 on page 199. Question 1 What is the difference between procyclical indicators and acyclical indicators? For marks. This has brought us to the end of our lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, complete and no answers versions. Complete versions have answers and no answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.